Hello YouTube friends, Dennis here. Welcome back to another video in my channel. So in today's video, we're diving into how to create your own AI agent in NNN to build your own knowledge base where we're going to be pulling information from a vector database such as Pinecone. Uh, on top of that, we will also pull information from another data source, which is Google Sheet, uh, if you want to include additional information on top of your PDF or text documents. Uh, if you're not familiar with NNN, NNN is an open source platform or tool for automating your workflows. I covered how to run for free in my previous video, if you'd like to check that out so you can follow along with today's tutorial. We're going to be setting up Pinecone and leverage that to index our documents, which is coming from Google Drive. So every time you add a document, it will automatically download that document and insert it into a Pinecone index. I'm going to be showing you guys how to set it up. In addition, I'll show you how to set up your AI agent in NNN to use a couple of tools in order to respond to a chat. The great thing about these workflows that I'm about to show you is that this is something that you can do in less than an hour, super quick and easy. And towards the end of the video, I'll show you how to embed it in your website as a chat bot. I'm also going to demo that quickly so you can see how it works. If you're new to my channel, my name is Dennis and I'm a principal software engineer and I make contents on coding, AI and automation. And I also have a community if you'd like to check that out. The link is in the description. So all the templates, workflows that I've covered in my channel will be available there as well as well as additional support if you need help with your personal automation project. So feel free to check that out. Without further ado, let's dive into setting up your own AI agent in NNN. All right, so a few concepts I'd like to go over before diving into automation. First is Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, which is a powerful technique in machine learning that improves the accuracy of large language models. We are going to be using this to supply our AI agents who can respond to our query using specific documents that we own. Instead of having AI come up with a response on its own, we're feeding it with additional information. So let's take a look at the diagram real quick and how that looks like in a general sense. So you have your index, which in our case, we're going to be using Pinecone. So you can feed it with information, which is coming from your database. It could be coming from your documents, which is what we're going to be doing. And you can also do it programmatically using an API. Pinecone also provi provides a way for you to be able to interact with their API. So you can push content inside of Pinecone. As a user, you'll be able to query this index and combine it with LLM to provide uh, and come up with a response. So in a general sense, that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. So let's see what it looks like inside of NNN so we can proceed with setting it all up. So for our demonstration today, we're gonna be using this restaurant. I found this website called Fratellinos and I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but they have a lunch menu here that you can download, including a dinner menu so you can open it up. So I wanna be able to use this so I can feed this into Pinecone so that when we create the chatbot, I want to be able to retrieve some information that's very specific to them and not have to use uh, the trained data from AI. So that's why I chose this for this particular demo. So that's what we're going to be using for our demonstration. And I'm going to show you guys real quick what the two workflows that we're going to be building. So the first is we're going to be adding the documents from Google Drive into Pinecone using Pinecone's vector store. So we're going to load that data and every time there's a new file that's been added to Google Drive, that's going to trigger this workflow. And we're going to be downloading that file from Google Drive. We're going to feed it into Pinecone uh, vector store, which we're going to be using uh, OpenAI's embeddings. So I'm going to be showing you guys in details how, how it works, but just to give you a high level overview of what we're going to be building today. And that requires a loader, which how to split the data into different chunks. So we're going to be using this default data loader. We're going to be uh, re doing a recursive uh, text splitter for this. The second workflow that we're going to be building is the actual chatbot. So NNN has a built-in chat where you can add, and that could be the trigger to your workflow. Every time we interact with that chat, it's going to be fed into this AI agent, which we're going to be using OpenAI chat model to be able to interact with this AI agent. We're going to be using a window buffer to keep track of the conversation with this chatbot. We can use a bunch of different tools, like from the previous workflow, we're going to be using Pinecone for this, which is what we're going to be using as one of the tools to feed into AI agent so it knows how to respond to the query in the chat. We're going to be using vector store to pull the information that we've pushed inside of Pinecone. And we're going to be using the Pinecone vector store again by using the OpenAI embeddings for this. As far as the chat is concerned, we're going to be using the OpenAI using GPT-40 Mini. 
I think that we're also going to be adding that to this is in addition to the document that we're feeding it from Google Drive, we're also going to be feeding it some information from our Google Sheet. So let's start by building the workflows inside of NNN. So let's add workflow here. So the first thing that we need to uh, do here is we need to add a trigger. So for our trigger, we need to add a trigger for the Google Drive. So every time we add a new P new PDF into our Google Drive folder, we're gonna pick that up, process it, push it up into Pinecone and store it in their index. So before we can add a trigger here, we now have to set it up to have access to our Google Drive. So I already have a Google Drive set up here, which I called it NNN Docs. Before we can actually interact with this, we need to allow NNN to access this Google Drive directory. And for that, we need to go to our Google Cloud account. We go to access it via console.cloud.google.com. You're gonna have to create a new project. So once you created a new project, you're gonna go to API and services, and we're gonna look for a couple of services, which we're gonna be using for this project. So the first thing is we're going to be uh, clicking on enable uh, API and services. You can uh, enable certain services that we're going to be using, uh, such as the Google Drive. So we're going to look for Google Drive. Uh, you're going to be clicking on Google Drive API. So you're going to have to enable that API. And the second thing that we have to enable, which we're going to take care of while we're here, is we're going to look for Google Sheets. We're going to be enabling the Google Sheets API. So I already have both of them enabled, so I don't have the enable button here. But if you don't have those two services enabled uh, for this API, you're going to have to click on enable for those two API. So once you have enabled uh, those two API services inside of your project, we're going to go to uh, API services. We're going to go to credentials. You have to create a credentials to be able to create the client ID and secret. So if we go back to NNN, let's add the first step here. And we're going to look for Google Drive as a trigger. We're going to be uh, selecting for the triggers. We're going to be selecting on changes involving a specific folder. And we're going to select the credential. So if you don't have any credentials uh, set up for NNN yet, we're going to create new credentials. You're going to be looking for the client ID and client secret. So, and also for the OAuth redirect URL, you're gonna have to copy this URL for the callback and you're gonna go back into Google console. So if you're gonna create a new credential, you can, we're gonna have to pick OAuth client ID. We're gonna pick web application. You can name this whatever you want. You could be more specific here as to what your use case is. So you can name this NNN. We're gonna click on Actually, before we do that, we can add the redirect URI, which we're going to be copying the UI, URI for the callback. And we're going to be pasting it into this authorized redirect URIs. And we're going to click on create. All right. So once you created this OAuth credentials, we're going to be given this client ID in secret. So this is the client ID and the secret that you need to paste inside within this text box on the screen. So you're going to have to supply the client ID in secret which we're going to be doing right now. Let's provide those two client ID. I'm going to copy the client secrets. We can click on sign in with Google. We're going to be using the account that I've created. I'm going to click on continue because I haven't really verified this app. We're going to click on continue. I can close that window. All right. So once I have it created, you can see here that the account has been created. Now you can use this connection. We're going to close this and going to go back here. You are going to use the trigger on changes involving a specific folder. So we can select which folder we want to trigger this workflow. So let's choose the trigger involving a specific folder. We're going to be choosing from the list. We're going to look for NNN docs. That's what I named my Google folder. We're going to be selecting files, a uh, file created for watch for. So every time we add a new file into that directory, we can trigger this workflow. Before we do this, we have to supply a PDF. I'm going to upload the menu for that restaurant that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to first upload their dinner menu. So you can see here, we can preview it. They have the appetizers and some of the menu items that they have here. Let's go back to NNN and let's fetch test event. 
this is going to be pulling the PDF that we just uploaded. So I'm going to go and switch to the JSON view or schema view, which I prefer instead of the table view. So I can see all the metadata for that PDF document. So it'll give you the file extension. It'll give you the name of the file. It'll give you the owners and other information that can be useful for you. In this particular case, we're only going to be needing the ID to fetch and download the document. So we're going to close this out and we're going to go to the next step, which is to download the document. So we're going to look for Google Drive again and we're going to find for the Google Drive node, we're going to be looking for the download file action. All right, so that's going to be connected there using the same credentials that we just used earlier. The resource is going to be a file, although you can use some other type of resource here. The operation is going to be download. So we want to be able to download the file into our local server from the list. Instead of a static file, we're going to be picking by ID so that we can download the file from Google Drive using an ID. So we're going to be switching here. So you can see here that the Google Drive trigger is on the left side for the input. We're going to look for, we're going to switch to schema so we can see all the metadata. And we're going to be scrolling down until we, we find ID. You're going to write and drop that and drop that inside of this field. We can test the step. So once the file has been downloaded, it's going to give you this output and it's going to give us the data with the file name, the file extension and some information such as MIME type and the file size, which is 760 kilobytes. And we can download it or you can view and preview it, which is nice. You can see what the PDF looks like. The next step is to upload all the chunks into Pinecone. So for that, you're going to have to create a Pinecone account. We're going to switch to Pinecore real quick. We're going to have to create a new database or index. So let's create a new index. I already have two here. So one is NNN menu and one is NNN index. So you have to just create an index here by clicking on this button. For the for index name, you can name it however you want. This is going to be the name of your database where you're going to be storing items to. So let's call this restaurant menu. And one required field here is the dimensions. And this is going to be depending on what type of model we select here, right? So using the metric of cosine, we're going to be clicking on setup by model. And for this, since we have a relatively small data, we're going to select the text embedding three small, and we're going to set the configuration. And that's going to automatically populate the dimension for us based on the model that we choose. The model that we choose has to be specific as that's what we're going to be uh, needing uh, to use inside of NNN. For the capacity mode, we're going to leave everything as it is. For the serverless, cloud provider, AWS, region is going to be the same. It's going to be Virginia. And let's create the index. It should only take a few seconds. You can browse the data or the records within this index. And you can see the name of that index. And you can also see the host and the type and all that information. And you can browse the namespaces here if you have some namespace. The namespace is just a way of basically putting all the different chunks into a bucket or a folder. So we can easily query that data. Let's switch to browser. But before we do that, let's actually go to API keys. You can create your own API key to be able to access the Pinecone service uh, from NNN. So after you create an API key, you're going to copy that. We're going to add a node here. After we download the file from Google Drive, we're going to look for an app here for a node. So let's look for Pinecone. And we're going to be selecting Pinecone Vector Store. We're going to be adding documents to Vector Store. You're going to have to set up your credentials. So I have a Pinecone API account here. But if you're setting up a new one, you're going to have to click on create new credentials. And this is where you're going to be uh, pasting your API key from Pinecone. So once you have that, we're going to switch to the operation mode, which we're going to be using the insert documents since we're pushing data inside of Pinecone index. And from the Pinecone index list, we're going to be selecting the NNN restaurant menu. We can actually set the name namespace here. So this is the namespace that we're going to be using to push the different chunks uh, of data into it. So this is just a way of uh, categorizing it. So let's put a menu here. Uh, you can have uh, different types of knowledge base if you have that type of projects or you want to put it in different locations so you can query it faster. So in our case, ours is just going to be called menu. 
And that's just going to be it as far as the Pinecone namespace. Let's get out of this. And as far as the Pinecone vector store, this requires a couple of input parameters. The first thing is the embedding. Uh, for the embedding, we're going to be using the embeddings OpenAI. So remember earlier that we used the uh, OpenAI embeddings and we specifically picked the text embeddings three small. In order for this to work, you have to be consistent uh, for, for the model we're going to be using here, since that's what we use to set up the Pinecone index. So for this one, we're going to be choosing the model in text embedding three small. There shouldn't be other options here. Let's go with that. The next thing is when we need to add the document loaders. So the document loader is going to be responsible for chunking the data before getting pushed into Pinecone. So we're going to switch from the type of data of JSON. So if you have a JSON uh, data, you're going to be choosing JSON here. Since we're using a PDF document, we're going to be using, switching to binary and we're going to be loading all input data here as the mode. We're just going to keep it as automatically detected by MIME type, but since all that information is being provided for us once we download that PDF document, we can just set it to automatically detect by MIME type. So the default data loader requires an input, which is the text splitter. So this is a tool being used to split the content. And for this, we're going to be using the recursive character text splitter. And for the chunk size, since we have a relatively small document. We're going to keep it at a chunk size of uh, 200. We can go higher on the chunk size if you want. So just depending on how big for each record uh, that you want to store inside of Pinecone. And the chunk overlap is to make sure that between each chunks, we have a little bit of overlap in between. So we're just going to keep it at 10%. So 10% of the chunk size is usually what you want the overlap to be. So in our case, since we have a chunk size of 200, so try to keep it small, we're going to keep the chunk size overlap to 20. And I believe that should be the only option. We can ignore the split code as get markdown is going to be the default. And let's get out of this. Let's actually save this first. Let's save, rename this to one of two, and we can test the workflow. And this is going to be running this whole workflow. So this is going to be pulling the PDF from Google Drive. We're going to be using the Pinecone vector store to push the data into Pinecone and it's going to be doing some chunking We're using the embeddings OpenAI model with this default data loader. So you can see that 70 items was stored uh, and pushed to Pinecone. If we go back into our Pinecone account, we can go back into database and go visit the index we just created. You can see that the first uh, 10 items is being shown, but you can see that the record count is 70 and we have a namespace here for menu. So by default, it has a default namespace uh, and it's going to tell you how many vectors are stored in that namespace. But you can browse around and look at the different data that's part of each vector. So we can go to each one. One thing I forgot to mention is you can actually add additional metadata to each of the record inside of the vector. And you can see here that there's some metadata information here regarding the PDF, the size and the source, and also the text for each one. So for each of these records, here's the text is stored for that record. So you can kind of see what type of values was stored for each vector. So once we have pushed all the data inside of the Pinecone vector database, you can access and query the data in a few different ways. You can use their SDK, which they have support for Python, Node, Go, and Java. In our case, we're going to be using the chatbot inside of NNN to trigger the workflow. So we're going to switch to our NNN account here and our workflows, and we're going to add a workflow inside of NNN. So we're going to name this into a chatbot. So that we're going to rename this into chatbot. And for our trigger, we're going to add a first step here. And for this one, we're just going to be using the on chat message. Let's add an A agent. And this will bring us the screen that will allow us to customize the A agent. And let's go back to the chat here. This still doesn't give us option. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And add the AI agent again. So if you go back here, it created the, the trigger for this workflow. So let's click on when chat message received. It's going to give us some options here. 
right? So you can make this chat public available. So if you're planning on using this on your website, you can interact this, with this on a different window. So you can set some options here for the mode for the chat. When we switch to embedding this into a website, we're going to have to switch to embedded chat. You can provide some options as, such as authentication. So the most important here is it's going to allow us to, to trigger and start this workflow using the chat interface. So we're going to get out of this and we're going to go and switch to AI agent. And from the agents list, you can pick from uh, the various options here. We can even pick a conversational agent, but for this particular one, we're going to be using the tools agent, which will allow us to add multiple tools to be able to respond to a query. So let's pick tools agent for now and let's get out of that. There's a few options that we're going to need to uh, feed into this AI agent. The first model is the chat model, which is what the AI agent is going to be using to interact and respond to a query. So for this, we're going to be selecting the OpenAI chat model. You're going to need an account with OpenAI. So you need to uh, create a new credential and you need to pro uh, provide your API key to be able to use this model. So once you have that available, I selected the GPT-40 mini for this. And the next thing that we need to supply the AI agent is the memory. So if you want to uh, be able to keep track of the previous responses and query, you need to add a memory here. So we're going to be using the Windows buffer memory just to keep it quick and simple. Although you can also use the managed service such as Postgres and Redis for the chat memory. If you want to use an external service just to manage the service, you can actually do this. So let's stick with the Windows buffer memory for now just to uh, keep track of the context windows length. And the next thing we need to supply here is the windows length. How far do we need to go back as far as the conversation window? So we can keep this at five just to keep the memory at minimum. And the next thing is the tool. You can add multiple tools here. So the first thing that we're going to be adding here is we're going to be using the pinecone uh, vector to pull the responses based on the query. So we're going to be looking for pinecone. Actually, we're going to go ahead and look for vector store tool. And for the description, we're adding a description here that will help the AI to identify uh, what tool to use uh, when responding to queries. Uh, for this one, I'm going to be using Italian restaurant menu for the description. This retrieves information regarding the menu items for a restaurant. And the limit here is how many items from the vector store we want to retrieve. In this case, we just want to keep it at four. You can get out of this. And for the vector store tool, it requires a couple of parameters. First thing is the actual vector store, which we're going to be supplying the Pinecone vector store. We already have a Pinecone API account set up. We're going to be using the retrieve documents for the operation mode and for the Pinecone index. If you go back into your database account here, you can go back and pick your namespaces. So I named mine menu. I'm going to supply it here. And I'm going to be choosing the restaurant's menu index for the options. We're going to be using the menu namespace. We're going to have to provide a model. So we're going to be supplying the model that we're going to be needing for this actual vector store. So we're going to be using the OpenAI chat model. So this is not the same embedding model that we've been using. So we're using the GPT-40 mini for this. You can use any type of model that you want. So we're going to keep it at GPT-40 mini. But as far as setting up the actual Pinecone Vector Store to actually interact with the Pinecone Vectors database, we're going to select the same embeddings that we've been using, which is the embeddings OpenAI. Since we've been using the text embeddings 3Small, we're going to select that. I think that's about it. So we're just going to keep those options by default. And that's going to be that for being able to query this database. One thing that we can also add here is we can also supply it with additional information from Google Sheets. So if you don't want to store everything in Pinecone database, we can also add additional context to the conversation by pulling it from Google Sheet. So I have a Google Sheet here. I call it NA menu and I have a menu item here and description and the price. Customer will be able to query the database and ask information that I haven't supplied inside of that menu. So we can add that as a, as a separate tool. We're going to be adding uh, Google Sheets tools. We're going to have to select and connect your Google Sheet account. So for this, you're going to have to do the same thing that we did uh, when we connected our Google Drive account. You're going to have to supply and connect it via OAuth. Uh, and once you have it set, you're going to have to go to the document list. And I'm going to be choosing the NNN menu. 
which I've named the spreadsheet. From the list, we're going to select the specific spreadsheet. This is going to be added as an additional tool to our AI agent. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and get this organized here. So I have the OpenAI chat model set and I have the Windows buffer memory for keeping track of the conversation. And I have two tools uh, set for this AI agent. One is the vector store tool, which is uh, pulling information from the Pinecone uh, vector storage. The next one is Google Sheets to provide uh, additional context as part of the conversation. So the last thing that we need to do here is we need to uh, save. We can even activate this. This is pretty much ready to go. So the next thing that we can do here is we can test out a agent by interacting with the chat. So let's click on this chat. We can ask some information regarding the menu. So we can ask such as what, uh, what types of pizza. So we're going to be asking some questions regarding the menu. And you can see here that uh, we have several types of pizza, including specialty type, create your own pizza. And if you go back into the menu that they have here and go back to pizza, you see here that the specialty pizza is one of them. We can ask about some combinations. All right, so it provided us with the four combinations that's available on the dinner menu. The first one is combo one, two, three, and four, the beef lasagna and ravioli, and spaghetti sauce, ravioli four, beef or vegetable lasagna. We can go inspect that beef lasagna, ravioli, ravioli, beef lasagna, ravioli, beef or vegetable lasagna, which is pretty much the four combinations that's being offered on the menu. But we can also see if it can respond to a question regarding the lunch menu. So since we haven't uploaded the lunch menu into the uh, Pinecone vector uh, database, uh, let's see if we can be able to respond to that question. What type of sandwiches do you offer? have for lunch and we're going to go and put it in as a query and it says i'm sorry but i couldn't retrieve the information about the types of sandwiches available for lunch if there's anything else that you'd like to know or if you have any different questions feel free to ask so what we're going to do is we're going to go and switch to google drive here so since i already only have a uh, one uh, menu in here i'm going to drag and upload the lunch menu and see if you can pick it up so I'm going to switch back to NNN and I'm going to save this. Since it's already saved, I'm going to go back to home and I need to deactivate some of the existing workflows that I have so it doesn't go and pick up that file and process it. I need to activate the previous one. So I'm going to activate the first flow in order to process the documents, which is what we're, what we're missing. So I'm going to delete that again so I can get processed. So once I have it activated, I'm going to drag it back into Google Drive and so I can re get reprocessed. So I once I have it uploaded, and if you go back into the all executions here, momentarily it should start processing and it should push into Pinecone. All right, so after a few seconds, it looks like it's running. That's completed already. So we can look at that execution uh, for this uh, one out of two store PDF from Google Drive to Pinecone. Let's let's go, let's look at what that process. So let's look at the top one. Double click on the drive trigger and let's switch to the JSON view here. Actually, the schema is probably better. And if you scroll down, we can see that the name of the file that was just processed and pushed to Pinecone, and everything is green. So before we had 70 documents and now we have 109, which means that the amount of documents that was stored inside of the index has gone up. We can go back into home. We can go back into the chat bot here and let's go and click on chat and let's ask about the lunch menu. So we can go and pick one of these items here from the lunch menu and we can ask questions about it and we can ask what are the sandwiches offered from your lunch menu. See if you can know how to handle that question. So it's meatball sandwiches, hot turkey sandwich, and vegetarian sandwich. Classic Italian, vegetarian, and meatball. It didn't include the sausage and turkey. It could be just because I specified 
to limit three or four response. We can even ask questions about the hours for lunch, what time's your lunch hour? A lunch hour is available from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So Monday to Friday. If you need any more information regarding just to let me know. So the next thing I want to test out is the Google Sheet that we've added here as part of the a agent for tools. So I added a Thanksgiving special here. So if you want to include additional information, that's not necessarily on the menu. So we're going to go and ask about the Thanksgiving. What is on the Thanksgiving menu? And let's see here, what is, oh, huh. let's take a look here. So automatically from list, shape tool description. Okay, for the description, we can actually set this. So read specials that are off menu. So we're going to go to hit save and we'll hit chat again. So let's reuse this, re reuse this message. All right. So our Thanksgiving special includes uh, Thanksgiving special, five pounds turkey and mashed potatoes for 10 people price as $100. So that's exactly what we put here. So if we want to add additional information that's like off the menu or that you want to provide to the chat, you can also include this, which is kind of nice. The only thing that I forgot to add here is you can add description. So the description is very important. This will allow the agent to know uh, which tool to pick up since we have the Google Sheets here and the vector store tool. So we have two tools as far as this AI agent. It needs to know based on the description that you specified here, which tool it needs to use. So that's how it can respond better and, you know, use which tool is appropriate for the job. The last thing I want to do here is I want to show you guys how to embed this into your website. So I have a JS fiddle here, which I have a the relatively easy type of website where you can see that there's a simple HTML and this is like a Fratellinos. I just use their name and this will be like a website where you can create a reservation. I want to be able to embed this chatbot as part of this website so I can show you how easy it is to do that. So we go back to the AI chatbot and double click on the trigger when chat message received. You're going to have to switch to make chat publicly available and you're going to have to activate this and save it but we're going to click on this keep in mind what the url is here is that's what we're going to be using but if you click on the, the mode here you can switch to embedded chat instead of hosted chat so by default it's going to be hosted chat you're going to have to uh, switch to embedded chat that will allow you to embed this on your website so there's some instruction here at the bottom where you can click on it and it's going to take you to this url if you click on it and it's going to take you to this NPM repository where you can see here the instruction for how to use this. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that if you want to use this for your website, uh, you can use it in a couple of ways. One is to embed it. You, you can solve it using NPM. And the second one is to just embed it via CDN, which we're going to be doing. So we're going to copy this code for the CDN embed, and we're going to go and go back to JS uh, Fiddle. So inside of your document, if you're trying to embed this in, into your website, uh, you're going to have to add it, preferably at the bottom uh, before the uh, the body tag end ends. So you're going to paste that right there and let's hide this up a little bit. Uh, for the Google, uh, for the, the style sheet, we're going to move it up um, on top before the header ends, since all the style sheet belongs up on the header uh, of the page. And going down here, uh, you're going to have to supply the webhook URL. You're going to copy the, the chat URL. So we're going to place this webhook URL. What is it going to do? It's going to load the script. It's going to create a chat object and it's going to be feeding that webhook URL as part of this window. So if we run this, it's actually going to give us this window at the bottom. And it's the same interface that we use to interact with. So we can ask about what is um, on your dinner menu. And it should be able to respond uh, the same way uh, since everything is pretty much uh, hosted inside of NNN. So you see here, nochi and lasagna, beef, vegetable, and marinara sauce. So that's how easy it is to build a workflow in NNN using an AA agent for your own chatbot with your very own custom knowledge base. I hope that this video has been insightful and have provided you with some value. And if so, feel free to hit like on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so as I will be doing more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to leave it down in the comments. Like always, I'll see you guys on the next one.